XCPNG has two different RAID options when you want to take any grouping of drives that you have installed in your XCPNG server and build them into an array. You can, and this will do it as default on setup, build a mirrored pair using MDADM. So if you have two drives and you want to have them a mirrored pair, that is an option that will build during the install process. And this is a good way to make sure you have some level of redundancy on the boot pool. Now you can go further and use the built-in Linux RAID to build more arrays out of other groupings of drives you may have in the system. And that's a good way to go, but a better way to go is actually using ZFS. Now, the myths about ZFS being memory intensive are a little bit overblown. You'll find a video I have linked down below talking about the memory requirements of ZFS. It does not need it, but it does perform better when you have more memory. So we will be addressing that in this video because this is all going to be talking about how to set up ZFS on XCPNG and also how to monitor it. Because one thing that may be a non-starter, and I want to make sure this is clear in the beginning of this video that is done here in September of 2024 using XCPNG version 8.3, there is no UI management or monitoring of the ZFS arrays you create. You're going to be able to mount them as a storage mount, but you're not going to be able to see the status of the RAID Z. That'll all be managed in the command line, but all the data does go out to syslog, and I'll be talking about how I monitor it with syslog. So let's get started on XCPNG and ZFS setup. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, the best place to start is with the documentation, but I'm not going to read it to you. I'll let you do that on your own. You'll find it linked down below. This is the software RAID in terms of MDADM RAID, and this is the ZFS commands for setting this up. Although for this part right here, we're actually going to do this through the UI. Once you have the pool created, you can manage it from the UI from there in terms of mounting it and using it as a storage device. It's only the management itself of ZFS that all has to be done from the command line. Now, as I said in the beginning, we're doing this video on version 8.3 of XCPNG. Here in September of 2024, it's at release candidate two. So it's pretty much the same as the full release. And by default, ZFS is not installed. This is true for version 8.2 as well. And these steps should work perfectly fine in version 8.2. The first thing to do is install the ZFS packages with a yum install zfs.x8664. You'll notice it's already the latest version because I've already done that step. The next thing I want to do before we get to creating the pool is setting this up. Then you can just do a mod probe to enable it, which is a mod probe dash V ZFS that will enable it, or you could reboot the server, which is something we're going to have to do over here anyways. And we want to enable maintenance mode first and hit OK. By enabling maintenance mode, that allows us to change the control domain memory. How much memory do you want to allocate to the control domain is really up to you. By default, ZFS does use up a good amount of memory for the ARC cache, but how much memory is limited based on what you set here. The control domain, or DOM0 as it's referred to in XAPNG, is a narrow slice of the underlying OS that controls all the other VMs. So the control domain is a fixed amount of memory you set that is not allowed to be allocated to VM. So the VM memory is never in conflict with the ZFS art cache. So you decide here just how much memory you want. I chose 16. You may choose 32. It's really going to come down to balancing performance, which obviously more memory means better performance with what amount of memory you have available in the system that you want to allocate to the VMs. But 16 is fine for what I'm doing right here. Now, once you've set this, it'll actually want to reboot and restart the server. It's not going to because I didn't change the number here, but go ahead and restart the server and then we can continue the process. And that part's pretty simple. We're just going to go LS BLK to list our block devices here. And we see I have a bunch of MVME drives and some standard SATA. 
And the standard state, oh, there's only one in here and that's already, you can see mounted and that's where I have installed XCPNG. Now we're gonna to group together these drives and build them out into a ZFS array. Now to make this easier to read, I've put it in a small little script here and the command is gonna be zpool create dash o a shift 12 dash m that's our mount point give it a name we're just going to call it local zfs we're going to choose a raid type i've chose chose raid z2 but you can build this out in raid z1 or raid z3 provided you have enough drives and that is just the fault tolerance raid z1 can suffer one drive failure two two drive failures and three three drive failures per vdev now i could split this up into multiple vdevs go ahead and look up the zfs commands for doing that if something you're interested in but for simplicity i have broke these out across here and putting as opposed to putting it all across one line just to make it easier easier to make sure I haven't missed any of the drives. So we have dev MVME 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So starting at 0, ending at 11 means we have 12 drives we're going to put into this array. As I said, you can break these out into separate VDEVs. There could be some performance advantages for it, but for simplicity of this tutorial, we're just going to make them one simple system. And doing the escape character so I can put them all in one line just makes it a little bit easier to read to make sure I've got all the drives and all the numbers in order. So we'll just quit this real quick and then we'll just go ahead and do a build the pool. The pool list. Hey, and there is our built pool that is currently online and healthy with plenty of storage available. Now, being that it's mounted makes a difference as well because now we're going to be able to point to that particular mount. But one more thing I want to do, and that's going to be turning off sync. Now, these are NVMe, so they're going to perform pretty well. But unless you add a log drive to this, you're going to have some performance issues with sync rights. Now, sync rights do protect integrity, but to the other side, uh, they come at the cost of performance because it will not release until the sync has completed across all the drives. I have a, another video diving deeper into how log drives work in ZFS if you want to get more in depth. But yes, you could add them from the command line as well. But for this, in the ZFS setup, we're just going to turn off sync as a way to gain performance because this is a lab setup and it's fine in a lab environment and you're really not that much at risk of losing data. The command for doing that is ZFS set sync disabled and the name of the pool. And then we'll verify by doing ZFS get sync local ZFS to confirm that the value is set to disable. This will, like I said, give us a bigger write performance at the cost of potentially losing a few seconds of data that is being written if there was a catastrophic failure, like power stopping all at once. Now, once we have this created, this is the really easy part. We're going to go over here to new storage, select the host. I've only got one host in here, storage name, uh, local Dell R740. ZFS, because I might connect more things later, so I want to make sure I'm implicitly clear on what this is. Choose the type, ZFS local, because it's looking at the local system. This is not for mounting an NFS or external storage. This is local only, non-shared. And when we choose it, automatically we find right here, local ZFS mount slash ZFS. By the way, if you were to create multiple pools out of the drives in here or with different groupings of drives, they would all show up on here and you could create each one as an individual storage. But all we have to do from here is click the create and now we have usable storage. Now I mentioned that you can manage the storage from here, but you can not manage in terms of the RAID Z setup itself. There's not any changes here. There's not any status menus here. It's just letting you know that the storage is available. It will give you the size and availability. And as, as I move a virtual machine here, which I believe I have one that I can migrate right now, we'll just migrate this drive over to it. There's our local Dell R740 ZFS. We'll hit OK and start the migration process. So I can do all those tasks, no problem, but there's no data about what's going on in the underlying ZFS. Now, jumping back over the command line, yes, tools like zpool iostat dash v1 will refresh this and we can see the rights being committed. We can see the bandwidth operation. We can also just simply do zpool status dash v and see that all these drives are online. But what would happen if we took a drive offline? Well, as noted, XCPNG itself would not have any information about that drive taken offline. This is one of the reasons I talk about using a syslog server to collect all of your logs. And if you go into the server under advanced and you look at remote syslog, you'll see I'm sending it to 192.168.2.7 colon 1521. This is my gray log server. And if we start going through the logs here, 
if you search for Z, that will be the status notices for me destroying the pool, uninitializing and initializing the pool because I did the destroy and create a couple times before doing this tutorial and all that data is in here. Not to mention, if you were to do ZIO and error and we do a search, this is me ejecting one of the drives and you can see the errors that come from this. Now, the way I manage this is I have my gray log monitoring for these type of errors. I have the same for the uh, MD ADM RAID errors, and I can build triggers off of that to send me an email if there's anything in these logs that says, hey, there's an error, there's a RAID failure, et cetera. I was, goes out of scope in this video because I have an entire separate video dedicated to how to set up gray log. It's one of my favorite open source tools for managing all my logs from all of my systems and then building alerts and triggers on the relevant things such as a RAID failure that I care about. Now, one last thing I want to mention is doing snapshots. ZFS snapshots are amazing, but when you're doing snapshots in Zen Orchestra of the underlying VMs, it does not do anything different based on the storage. As in, if you're using local storage that is a standard drive or you're using ZFS, the snapshots are still snapshots via their API, not ZFS snapshots. And that's where there's sometimes confusion because it is a snapshot, but it's not talking to ZFS. The reason for this is it would be a pretty big engineering lift to say, hey, let's use the ZFS snapshots for the snapshots that we're doing for our virtual machines, but then be able to move it fluidly to other storage. Now, this is not an impossible task, just a complicated one. And there has been talk about taking more advantage of some of the underlying ZFS functions. But as of right now, as recording in this video, that is not how it works. So your snapshots work the same, but this advantage is of course that you can build this ZFS, be able to do your normal functions inside of Zen Orchestra and then migrate that VM to another storage repository with all the different snapshots that you have intact. It would be uh, kind of different to do that inside of ZFS because ZFS snapshots for all their amazing features are not going to interpret exactly well uh, to standard VM snapshots. So just something to think about when you're doing this, but love hearing from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Would you use this setup? Is this something you're interested in? I bring it up because we don't really have any clients that I'm aware of running ZFS like this in production. Most of the time, the ZFS is on a TrueNAS server or an attached storage. And I've talked about that. You'll find in the playlist down below for setting up different storage types, including TrueNAS plus XCPNG, which is popular, but it does work with a, it really anywhere you can get NFS or iSCSI and then you can take advantage of that. NFS is probably the better way, but I won't get too off topic because watch that video on how XCPNG storage works. Head over to the XCPNG forums. There's a lot of participation in the community there from the team over at Vates who produces the XCPNG and Zen Orchestra. You can engage with them on ideas. Head over to my forums if you want to engage with me on this and other topics that I've talked about on the channel. Like and subscribe to see more content from my channel. And uh, head over to LawrenceSystems.com to connect me on socials or sign up for my newsletter or all other things if you want to find out what I got going on over there. And it's much appreciated. Thanks.